So you heard kind of D'Angelo talk about wanting to be able to be somewhere where he can unpack and set down roots. How do you guys as an organization try to help that process and really show that, hey, we want you to be here for a long time. This is a place that you can really settle in. You know, fortunately for us, uh, we've been on, on the D'Angelo uh, pursuit for a long period of time. So we've, you know, the, our environment, whether it's D'Angelo or whether it's our 15th guy, we want those guys to feel like this is home. And these trades the last couple of days were hard because the individuals that had to leave were, were great, great individuals. You know, they had families that we really cared about. And our motto, our approach is always, while you're a Timberwolf, we're going to treat you the best that you can be treated. Uh, as best as we can, we'll do anything for you, your family, on the court or off the court. But unfortunately, this is a business as well. And decisions have to be made. And a lot of times, we all know it's results-oriented business. And we have a vision that we want to execute. And that, that puts us in a situation where we have to make decisions. But we care about the individual. When we talk about being player-centric, when we talk about being family-oriented, I wish I could share with you guys everything that we do with individuals to make them feel uh, like nobody cares about them as much as we do. And that's what we're doing for D'Angelo. Top to bottom, individual, family-wise, on the court, off the court. Uh, we've turned every stone to make sure that this is where he's going to be, uh, not only now, but hopefully the rest of his career. And that we'll be able to look back at today as the start of something not only special, but productive. How much, how much of the fact that he and Carl are so close played into the decision, or was it a purely basketball? It, it, it's got to start with basketball. Uh, I mean, you know, the reality in this league, and uh, we're all human. You know, I say it all the time, we're all flawed. Things can change. You know, guys can be best friends today, and they're not friends tomorrow, you know. Um, I lived that in, in, in different situations that I've been in professionally in, in my career. So uh, it starts with basketball. You've got, you know, a, a playmaking guard who fits in great with uh, maybe the most versatile and skilled center in the league right now. And the ability to execute our, our vision uh, with those two uh, as the pillars of who we are and how we play uh, was very enticing from a basketball. Uh, but I, I would say, you know, a secondary benefit of that is they know each other, they have a relationship, and what I preach to them, what Ryan preaches to them is we haven't done anything. We have to challenge ourselves. We have to be better overall, not only them as players, but us as an organization to accomplish the objectives and the goals we have. And that's not going to happen just because we want it to happen. So they already have a relationship, Chris, where they can talk to themselves at a different level than and if it was just two guys that didn't have that rapport. The other yeah. thing those two guys have in common is neither one of them is very highly rated in the defensive metrics. How do you guys turn that around and get them to? That, that's team. That's team. I mean, you look at any team that's good defensive team in the NBA, it's not because they have one good defensive player. Um, I do think the net of this talent-wise for us is that we're a very potent offense, and the net factor of that is very powerful. Uh, but defensively, we have to improve. I mean, that, all of us, individually, uh, but also uh, as a team, our, our ability to come together systematically, philosophically, in terms of scheme, that comes from, you know, everybody committed to doing the right things. But personnel-wise, I, I think as you look at our roster, there's a reason why Josh Okoge is here. There's a reason why we drafted Jared Colvin. There's a reason why James Johnson was part of that deal. Uh, we feel like Juancho Gomez is a, uh, Hernan Gomez is a great, great compliment to Cat at the four, a guy who's willing to do the dirty work, who's mobile, who rebounds. You know, it's, 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 the, um, it's the group that needs to improve defensively. You know, we've got Carl and D'Angelo have to do it individually. There's no doubt about that. But as a whole, as a unit, as a group, we have to be better. And if you look back at this past year, the 50 games we've had, we've actually shown signs of being a better defensive team than we have being off better offensively. I think there's a correlation there that's often forgotten. When you can score, it makes it harder on the opposing offense to score. And a lot of times, our inability offensively is to put a lot of pressure on our defense. So I don't think you can just signal one area out. It's the offense, defense, it's the balance, it's the net of who we're going to become. To that end, um with Carl, you talk about this being an evaluation year. With seeing him uh, to this point in the season and how he's executed the offensive and the defensive systems, how would you evaluate him uh, this year? Yeah, I mean, you know, he's, you know, other than those 15 games that he missed, he was on pace, and, and he's still on pace production-wise production to have one of, if not the best year of his career. 
I think defensively, the things that we've tried to do with him uh, when our group has been complete have been productive. Unfortunately, we've had some inconsistencies. I mean, we look at a guy like Jake Lehman who's been out, and he was a big part of that success early on. Uh, but he's growing and he's developing, and he's got much more to go. And it's what I told D'Angelo as well. You know, you guys are 23, 24. Um, our, my job, Ryan's job, is to make sure that we challenge them to become the best players that they can become at 27, 28, and 29. And that takes a lot of work. Too. We know guys like Malik and Wancho, and you're looking at potentially acquiring them. How do you project the success they have in their current roles and how that's going to correlate to if you give them bigger roles? Unfortunately, that's why we have jobs. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the bets that we're taking. But um, we believe in those guys. And, uh, you know, for me personally, we've studied them uh, pretty deep, even from the draft before they came into the league. And our staff has done a good job of evaluating their projection now as we've acquired them in trades. But they come from a very successful program. They have a level of talent that we needed in our program. And they have a fit to our system. We needed a, another guard in, in, in Malik that can attack the basket, that can shoot, uh, but is a two-way guy. He has physical tools and juice defensively that we didn't have at that position. And then with Juancho, I mean, offensively, he's what we want our power forwards to be. He needs to continue to improve his shooting, but his running the floor, his offensive rebound, and his ability to space the floor in different ways. And then defensively, his versatility to play different different positions and do different things we think are, are, are things that we value both now and in the future. First, you touched about Al uh, when, you, when you acquired him, the, the value of his, his bird rights and kind of the, the trial run you can have there to see if, he's, if he fits here. Obviously, that's a similar situation with Beasley and Hernan Gomez expiring. Can you can you explain why that element of acquiring them is important, having the restricted rights? Um, you know, there's there's some uh, restrictions that I can comment on that, just league-wide. Okay. Uh, but I would tell you this, uh, both of those players uh, were acquired because we see them as significant fits for us now and into the future. And I love that we have a base now that's closer to 23 to 25 with guys. I, the, one of the biggest factors in winning is continuity. And we want to get to a group that we can have a lot of continuity with. But in order to have continuity, you have to win. And win successfully and win consistently and have a sustainable model there. We're not there yet. So these are a couple of guys that having them in our program, having them in our system for the next 30 games are critical. It's critical for them and it's critical for us. But we're, uh, we're big fans of what they bring. Uh, and I throw Jared Vanderbilt into that a guy that's a great, great system fit. So all of those individuals, we feel like uh, they're not they're not short-term moves, they're, they're the long-term perspective. You've connected dots to Brooklyn and Portland and, and other moves you've made, other acquisitions. Is another dot to connect these guys from Denver, specifically playing alongside Jokic and the kind of how he functions in ways similar to Carl? Yeah, I, I think that's very fair. Uh, I think when there's not a lot of teams in this day and age who have a dominant big that you can play off of. And for us, the efficiency of moving these guys over, and it's, it's interesting you bring that up because I was having a conversation with uh, Malik and Juancho yesterday and that they're playing with a dominant big, but it's different. Like, to be fair, uh, Jokic is such an unbelievable passer, but, uh, you know, Cats, elite ability to shoot just spaces the floor totally different and that'll be an adjustment but they understand uh, the difference of playing through a big and a lot of those actions that we run are similar to actions they run with Jokic. What, what kept you from ever getting discouraged in your pursuit of D'Angelo? <laughs> I uh, you know I said it in my initial press conference but I'm not the type of guy who if you say no to I'm gonna go away. Uh, we, we're very confident our staff does an unbelievable job of value propositions and we were very strong on what we believed and what we thought those values were and at the end of the day whether it's D'Angelo or the next player we have to be aggressive that's by our nature and we know the value points to make a decision and we're very confident of that and just because he tell us no you know we're not going to go away we're going to try to be creative unfortunately we have a staff that's super creative and can look at all the alternatives to execute so for us uh, it's part of the process, and, and I say it about our team, and I say it about our, our job. Nothing good is easy, and that's something that, you know, at all levels I truly value.